Come in. <clears throat> you wanted to see me, sir? Yes, I did, Charlie. Make sure that door's probably shut behind you. It's got a nasty habit of sticking lately. Good. Now, sit down, sit down. And I insist you dispense with such needless formalities. My son-in-law should hardly have to call me sir behind closed doors, don't you think? As you wish, John. But I'm assuming it's not a family matter that you've summoned me for. Well, indeed. But do tell me, uh, how is my Sarah? Her mother says she hasn't written to her for over a fortnight. Oh, yes, I suppose she wouldn't have. Says her wrist is troubling her. Doctor says it's too much writing, and she's to rest from it. She's always writing letters to somebody, you know. I suggested she employ someone to type for her, but she's not managed to find anyone agreeable yet. Ha! <laughs> that sounds like my Sarah. Always one to want to do it herself. Once she learned to do a thing, no one else's way of doing it was good enough. Don't I well know it? <laughs> to be sure, to be sure. Now, to business. I have something of a conundrum, Charlie, and I think you're the very man to fix it. Tell me, has Vickers Independent ever crossed your desk? Uh, the A1 specification, yes, I've seen it on manoeuvres. Great big multiple turret thing. That's the one, Charlie. Impressive looking machine. I gather it's turned a good few heads across the globe, despite its teething issues. I suppose that was inevitable, but what of it? Well, how do you suppose it would seem if the world's largest and most cutting-edge tank, the one everyone wants, the very land battleship Churchill dreamed of, what have I told you that the pride of British tank development was tearing itself apart from its oversized backside forwards? That's, uh, that's quite the way of putting it, but yes, not the image we want to project to the world at all. Too long, I expect. That's certainly a contributing factor, but since we're limited by the railway loading gauge and going large means, well, going long. And besides, it's no longer than your old Mark IV was, Charlie. Now, we've sent it back to Vickers to have it repaired and reinforced, and we're looking into a new transmission that might solve the issue. But I'm afraid this may simply be a sign that the design is untenable. After two years of trying to patch the thing up, I think it's high time we went back to the drawing board. But John, the army has already invested a huge amount of money in this machine. Sunk cost be damned. It's time to move on, I say. Take the general idea, take what's good, take the lessons we have learned, and make a better design from the ground up. The A1E1 is a tank for the late 1920s. It is 1928, and it's about time that we start building a tank for the 1930s. <laughs> my, my, when did old Stone Age get so forward-thinking? I had a mind to see you promoted to full colonel, Charlie, Watch your tongue and see to it that I don't have a reason to rethink, eh? <laughs> Will do, sir. But tell me, John, what does any of this have to do with me? It has everything to do with you, Charlie, because you're going to be in charge of finding and selecting a replacement for the A1E1. I am hereby seconding you for a special project, to seek out suitable engineering firms across the country and to ask them to submit prototypes for an improved heavy tank to replace the independent. You'll be then responsible for putting together a team of experts who will determine which of these submissions has the most promise, and then you'll report back here and resume your command. And do I have any say in the matter? Your Colonel Commandant wills it, Charlie, and so it shall be done. What of the third while I'm away? All in hand, dear boy, all in hand, fear not. Major Westinghouse of the Second will take acting command of the Third till you return. And where will I be posted for this endeavour? You'll be on the road a lot, I expect, visiting the various companies. You can do the desk work from your own office in Craigie House if you like. I've arranged for a car and a driver if you'll need them, but I know you'll probably prefer to drive yourself. Well, there's not much point having a Crossley two-litre sports if I don't drive it, John. Now, oh, suit yourself, Charlie, suit yourself. I'll send over the paperwork tonight, all right? Keep me posted as to how you get on. Of course, sir. But one more question, if I may. Certainly, ask away. Why me? 
because you can see the potential in people and ideas that most people miss. You look beyond first impressions. Your talent is to identify talent, Charlie, wherever you find it. And you're good at putting that talent to work where it's most effective, which means you get results. You're better with people than most of us military types to boot, so I reckon you're the very man for this job. Hey, boss. There's a colonel from the army here to see you. Says it's about uh, a letter he sent you last week. Good afternoon. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Oscar of the Royal Tank Corps. A pleasure to meet you in person. Thank you for your interest in our little project. It's good to have a company as prestigious as yours on board. And I have with me here all the paperwork you'll need to bring you up to speed and get you started with your design work. But before you open this envelope, I'm afraid I must insist that you sign this to confirm that you understand you are henceforth to be bound by the Official Secrets Act of 1920. Excellent. And a copy for you to retain. Splendid. Now, here is the specification we have drawn up for the new heavy tank. As I stated in my letter, your job will be to devise and build a prototype tank to meet or preferably exceed this specification, then have it delivered to Bovington for trials. I warn you, there will be stiff competition, to ensure the British Army receives only the very best of the best. So, be sure to put your best minds to the task. The deadline for submissions will be the 25th of July. I do look forward to seeing what you'll come up with. (laughs) 